Hello and welcome to another lecture. Today I want to design a collet coupling or a conical uh, coupling. It consists of uh, three parts. Usually the one that I have here has a inner ring with a conical shape or a tapered shape and an outer ring and a screw that helps with uh, having the wedge action to apply force and have the wedge action basically by having a wedge like shape here we can apply force from the ring and then uh, push the inner ring uh, to the shaft and when the inner ring is touching the shaft it applies friction and we can transfer torque by using the friction now first I want to calculate the dimensions uh, of the collet. Here uh, you see I divided it to two stages. The first stage is where we apply force to the collet until it touches the shaft. And we can calculate this force based on the dimensions for clearance and the stiffness of the collet. So basically, the more clearance you have, you need to push more in order to have the uh, collet touch the shaft. Or if the material is really strong, then you need to push more. And you can see it here in this formula. And also, by just looking at the dimensions, I know that if I want to remove the clearance, I have to move the distance delta. So I have a wedge here. By dividing the clearance to the tangent of alpha, the alpha is the angle of the wedge or taper. This uh, red collet needs to move delta millimeters until it touches the uh, shaft. And also here, after on on second stage, after the uh, the collet, uh, the red part touched the shaft. I need to apply more force now so I have enough normal force to the shaft and I can generate enough friction which I will use this formula. Now based on some numbers that I already have and the collet that I already designed I here calculated uh, the force needed to remove the clearance meaning this stage one. Here I'm using A as this area. I just assume that the flange is not going to have any structure or effect. It's not working uh, as I only push the small ring with uh, the washer or the outer ring. So I assume this is the area that is being uh, that is affecting the stiffness. And I just cut a section through the collet and I can read the area which is shown in orange. And then uh, C clearance, I uh, designed the uh, tenth of a millimeter for a uh, diameter clearance, which is 0 0.05 millimeters on each side. I'm using a steel, this is the modulus of elasticity of a steel. And DM is the average uh, diameter, which is the um, average between diameter of shaft and the outer diameter of this green ring. And I'm um, using 1.5 degree of taper. Calculating F0 or the force I need for the first stage, I'm going to need around 2,500 newtons. Now, I also assume that all parts of made of steel and the coefficient of friction is 0 0.1. And here I can calculate phi, which is 6 degrees for a steel. Based on that, I can find delta as 1.9 or 2 millimeters, meaning that I need to move this uh, red part to the left for at least 2 millimeters until it touches the shaft. Now I need to move it a little bit more to apply some force to the shaft so that's why I add up or just uh, round it up uh, to two millimeters. Then uh, 
we can also start from a stage two. There is a torque that I want to transfer to begin with. So here I uh, assume that I want to transfer 10,000 newton millimeters or 10 newton meter. And diameter of the shaft is 10. So I can calculate the normal force I need to be applied onto the shaft here, the normal force in this direction that, uh, let me show it with an arrow. So as I push to the left, the normal force is going to be like this. And also we have another normal force. We have a force from all directions actually, but this is how it looks like. This force needs to be 20,000 newtons. So I can generate enough friction and that friction can transfer the torque. Now this uh, normal force is being applied to the shaft from all sides and uh, I can calculate uh, the force F1 to the left which is needed so I can generate that normal force which is 20,000. From there I can find F1 as 4,600. So if I apply 4,000 Newton from right to left to the red part, it will generate a downward force of 20,000 Newtons, which in turn generates enough, enough friction to transfer 10,000 Newton millimeters of torque. Here uh, you see I have the force uh, but in the simulation, I'm going to get the contact pressure. So I need to divide this force by this blue area, which is the area on the shaft, uh, the surface area on the shaft, or we can say projected surface area of the shaft under the collet, which this 20,000 Newton is being applied. So the pressure of around 300 megapascal at the end is needed on the shaft to transfer 10 newton meters. Now this is a lot of force if we add them up. Uh, it's gonna be uh, around 7,000 newtons. There are two methods you can use to reduce the preload. The first stage load, this 2,500 newtons. The second stage or F1, uh, you can't reduce that. This is the force we need to transfer the torque. So the only way to reduce that is to reduce the, to increase the friction. But uh, the first stage, the force you require to remove this clearance, basically there are two methods. You can either use a softer material for the collet, so it easily deforms and removes this uh, clearance or you can cut some materials like I did here like it's shown here to reduce area A the parameter A which I used uh, this two orange areas now if I remove some material I can use these two areas that are shown as A but I'm not going to reduce the um, preload I'm going to have uh, the same color that I showed here in the simulation and uh, find out that if I can transfer uh, this amount of torque with that. So let's move on to NX. I have the collet here. I made a two millimeter gap here. You can see the distance is two millimeters. Basically I had the collet here. If, let me show. Let me open the assembly in a new window so we can. So I started with the collet like this. As you can see, I have an angle that is tapered, 1.5 degrees. The inside diameter, I uh, have the clearance, as I said. So it's 10.1 while the shaft is 10. 
And then I just added the ring uh, two millimeters away from the collet. And then I use the subtract to subtract this uh, collet or inner ring from the outer ring, which ended up with this shape, which again has the, uh, let me show, internal taper angle that matches uh, with the collet, as you can see here. So both of them are in contact right now. There is uh, no movement or deformation needed to stop the contact. Going back to the parts and bringing back, and I have the shaft like as small as possible. So I don't need to mesh the whole shaft. This shaft was uh, bigger as shown here. But I just cut the shaft to a smaller piece, which is enough for the simulation. And uh, it makes the simulation faster. So now I can move to the pre post. I don't want to change anything here, so I create a new film and simulation. Select the parts that want to be in the simulation. And note here that uh, I, I have a contact. Uh, with large deformation. And these deformations are going to affect the result, actually. So I need to use a nonlinear simulation because the two millimeters deformation is not small enough to be neglected. Here, now we have 106 nonlinear statics, but it doesn't support contact. The other one that supports contact is 601, but it's being removed and replaced by 401, multi-step nonlinear. So I'm going to use 401 and create a solution. Here I want to request some more results, especially the contact. So when the simulation is done, I'm going to have some contact result to read, like contact pressure. And then uh, and the global contact parameters, as I explained before, I need to set the uh, gap and penetration, the initial gap and penetration to zero. And then uh, I don't think uh, I have more. I, ha I want to hear on bulk data. I want to have larger strength, but I don't need material nonlinearity here. So we can create a step. This step is OK. We can increase the time step to five, so we have a more smooth uh, simulation. Now on, I'm on the film part, and I can start uh, meshing. I use tetrahedral. I uh, select everything, and I use almost half of what is recommended here to get a fine mesh. The mesh seems fine enough. If I can get this to center, yeah. And then since we are here, I can also define the material. I'm going to use a steel in the simulation as I did in uh, calculation. Then I need to uh, go to the simulation and apply constraints and contacts and load. First with the constraint, I'm going to fix the collet because I want to have the outer ring move to the collet. You can also fix the collet, fix the outer ring and move the collet, no difference. Here I fix the collet and also I fix the shaft because uh, this is in contact with the collet, and as it moves, it may move the shaft. And since there is no contact, remember that we have a gap here. So the shaft is not in contact with the collet uh, in the beginning. So we need to constrain it so these uh, parts are not under constraint. So the shaft is fixed, collet is fixed. 
outer ring needs to move for two millimeters. So I go with enforced displacement. I want this object. Let me go to magnitude of direction. I want this object to move two millimeters along this vector. Click OK and you can see it like an arrow showing that all these elements are going to move for two millimeters. Next, I need to define contact. First, we need to define pairs. So here, the, this number is not big enough. Remember that I have a gap here that I need to be in the uh, contact as well. So I'm going to increase this to tenth of a millimeter. And here we get two pairs of contact. We click OK, and you can see that if I now remove the mesh and um, a constraint, I can go to polygon, and you can see that first one we have between the shaft and collet, the contact, and then we also have one between the collet and outer ring. On the contact, uh, let me go back to the contacts. I think I forgot to have uh, friction. So I'm going to have friction of 0.1 here. We can also remove friction or reduce it between the outer ring and call it so this moves easier uh, and closes the gap easier without moving the collet that much but that means that you need to have a polished surface and probably grease or lubrication to have an easier contact but i'm gonna leave it like this so you're gonna see that it actually stretches the collet as it moves uh, which is called the uh, traction friction and the result. So now on the solution, we have the load. Uh, sorry, we have the enforced displacement. We have two fixed ones. Let me bring back the shaft here. We have two fixed ones, the collet and the shaft. And then we are pushing this face for two millimeters, which will touch this face anyway. And then we can read the forces. So I can run NASTRA to solve the problem. The simulation is finished. I can now take a look at the results. It took around five minutes to simulate this. I move down to the result, and here we have, since this is a nonlinear simulation, you're going to have increments. I only have one time step, which was five seconds, so I see increment one here. If you apply more steps, like the next step would be turning the shaft and seeing how will it react, for example. Now we have only one increment or one step. Let's take a look at the deformation. You see that the outer ring is moving and closing the gap. And as it does, it also deforms the collet more into the axial direction than the radial direction because of the friction we have between the outer ring and the collet. As I said, that could be removed by using lubrication on the collet. And uh, I can check the displacement on the ring as well, which we are interested in. So let's remove the outer ring first. This is how the collet looks like. If I go with the side view, you see that it's also being pushed. And if you look here, it somehow goes into the flat shape 
which matches with the shaft and sit on the shaft. And if I remove this to take a look at the shaft only, here you see some spots and the distribution is not uh, very smooth. That's because of the mesh. So this is not a perfect and round shaft. That's why you see some points have higher uh, stresses or contact pressures or uh, sorry, higher uh, deformations. But that in turn uh, generates higher stress. This is, uh, you can uh, make your mesh finer to remove this, but uh, this is not a very big deal here. And if we take a look at the displacement, you see that how uh, the displacement changes on the shaft. And it's clear here that the shaft is being squeezed by the collet. Now, uh, this shows that the deformation, that uh, the two millimeters gap is actually enough to have the collet touch the shaft, which was some basic geometric calculation. Now let's move to the contact pressure and see if the pressure is enough to transfer the torque. I'm gonna remove everything and just keep the shaft. Here on the shaft, we can see that we have a pressure of 1,600 uh, megapascal which is at this peak point. So if we go back to the calculation, which uh, I did, it shows that we need a minimum of around 300 megapascal to transfer the torque. Now I cannot trust this particular point. Pick some points and read the stress or just get a box and if you just select the contact region, because if you select where there is no contact, these contact pressures are all zero. And that will add up to your averaging. I don't want to add that. So on the contact region, I have the average of 500 megapascal, which is higher than 300 megapascal needed to transfer the uh, torque. We can also check what misses a stress. Here as well, I have a hotter spot, which I cannot trust. This is around 5,000 megapascal, which is a really large uh, stress. But if I go here, I have around 2,500 megapascal of a stress. This, is, this seems uh, too much for a steel shaft. And we might have failure on the shaft by pushing that much. So you probably cannot use a hollow shaft like this to can deform that much. The other thing I want to check is uh, the force that being applied. Here as well, we see on the sharp edges, we have uh, some vomises stresses that we cannot trust, but you just need to ignore the stress and pick uh, other points if needed, if you wanted to read the stress on the ring or the color. But here I want to take a look on reaction forces. You can see that I have um, around 500 neutrons. And uh, let's see the Z reaction. And uh, we should uh, hide everything and keep the color. And then we can select the box of all points. And you can see the sum. It's around uh, 9,000 newtons, which is a bit more, around 20% more than what we calculated here at 7,000. So this is the uh, uh, normal force that we need to apply to close the gap and generate friction. Now by using that force, that 9,000 Newton, I can design the screws. So you need some screws that by clamping them, 
you can close the gap and apply that force. So you need the screws that can hold up to 9,000 newtons. 